You're listening to the Girls on the Grid podcast with Tanea McLeod and Priya Richards. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Girls on the Grid podcast. Vodcast, thank you. Vodcast. We haven't done this in like a year and a half. I know, because look at our studio. It's horrendous. Yeah. As you can see. Uh, this is the important one. This could be you up here. This could be you. It could. So need sponsor for a better studio. Please help us. How have you been? <laughs> oh my god, I've just come off the most insane two weeks of Bathurst for the Bathurst yeah. Superfest, and I'm still recovering. I can't relate, honestly. I, be nice. <laughs> I honestly like. I'm okay with it though. I think coming off the back of such a busy year last year, mm. it's nice just to relax and have a break. But it looked like fun. Like it was good fun. We stay in a house. I actually haven't spoken we to were, you about this. We were in a house during the event, and then for those like weird like three days in between, like the Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, we went to a motel and went back to the same house. It was oh, a okay. weird situation. Did they have someone else in the house? No, nah, I think time? they just cleaned it and stuff. Okay. Or, I don't yeah, know. they would have needed that after you being there. Yeah. True. Yeah. No, that's so good. It looked really fun. It was. Yeah, it was wild. It, yeah. We went from work to not work to work and yeah we all had a good time even though it was exhausting the 12 yeah like i think if the 500 was first it would have been okay okay yeah but because the 12 hour is just such an insane event like we're mm. at the track for 18 hours on sunday because it's just such an insane event to recover from that it's is insane. a lot it's a lot to recover from that so if we had the 500 first then went into the 12 hour it might have been a little bit more manageable because it was the 12 hour we were all cooked on sunday yeah. And then, you know, Monday, Tuesday, I'm still like, I'm still finishing edits on Monday and Tuesday, mm. still like tying up things. All of a sudden it's Wednesday and I'm going back to the track. Do you have like, where, like when the race, because what time does the race finish? Like six o'clock? 5.45. 5.45. Do you like have edits to do after the race? Yeah. 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 Stuff that, not yeah. when you've been up for yeah, like no. my alarm 24 went off at, hours. My alarm went off at 3.30. Yeah. I have a very specific memory. Bathurst 12 hour. It was my first one when it's we had experience. our team. And I think I'd been, I woke up at three something and then we all went back because we were staying on the mountain at, yeah. at the house on um, Mountain Street. Yep. And um, the Tickford house. Yeah. The Tickford house. Yeah. And so <laughs> we had those, our whole, for those that know, no. Yeah. So there was that house and we had our whole team staying there and I'm like 15. I'm like, oh I'm a little girl. It's yeah. my first big Bathurst 12 hour experience. And then I think we had all of our team over at the end of the Bathurst 12 hour. We're all like, you know breaking it up, having a good night and it's 3 a.m. and I go to bed and I am hallucinating. There's mechanics in the lounge room and like race cars on the walls and I can hear them so loudly. Do you get that? Like at the end of a no, race, I can you weird hear dreams. cars? I hear the edits that I edited too. Really? I just listen oh, that to would, the, the that songs that me. I make videos of are just on repeat in my head while I'm no, sleeping. I just like, it's just race Yeah, cars. that's way less scary than mechanics in the lounge room. No, yeah, I'm like, what is going on? That's and mum's like, go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> like, please. Make some, you make so much more sense now knowing that you were scarred as a 15 year old. <laughs> yeah, no, my last few weeks have been very chill. Like very preparing for the Grand Prix. Um, had a couple jobs before 12 hour. But other than that, yeah, very chill. Yeah, Clay's back doing his, back in the TCR series. I've been in cool. New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Went to Warrnambool for the sprint cars. You did Formula Regional yes. stuff? Yes, Formula yeah. Regional, their first round, uh, which was the second, like the third, second or third week of January. Then mm. I went to Napa Sprint Cars the weekend after that. Mm -hmm. Not Napa Sprint Cars. I went to the Sprint Cars for Napa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't the Napa Sprint Cars. Uh, and then, yeah, Sandown, Bathurst 12 hour, Bathurst 500 back to back. Far out. It was yeah. a busy February. I forgot that was the thing. Like all of them back Three to back. Three in a row. Yeah. Did Oof. you have the Motorsport Australia Awards? Sorry, this is like us literally just catching We're up just on catching life. Because we yeah. never this is not a see each other. <laughs> um, uh, no, I didn't. Because yeah. it was Sunday. I was sitting down and... Yeah, no. Nah, no. Nah. My boyfriend wasn't in the state, so... That's fair enough. I was, Uninterested. Well, I knew I wasn't going to be in a state, which is actually like really smart of me yeah. to do. To be like, Why nah. they do it on a Sunday event? Like, do it, put it on Monday. Boo When I... No, 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 no. My first day boo... At a Motorsport Australia Awards, it's gonna be when I wanna win something. I yeah. wanna win something. This. We gotta, no, we actually gotta win to. something. Yeah. Girls on the Grid, best podcast. That's what I mean, exactly. <laughs> Do you remember the whole Victorian Sport Awards thing? I forgot about that. Like, I totally... We didn't win, so we buried it. No, but I don't bury it. It was a fun night. It I can't even night. believe like we got there, to be honest. I don't know who nominated us. Yeah, but... it was pretty cool. Thank you to whoever did. It's been a big year. 
Not for the podcast. Not for the podcast, but the but last for the year us. for us. For the hosts, it's been a big year. And that exactly. Te- and that translates to why the podcast hasn't been big, because yeah. we've been slammed. Exactly. But in the last year, there's been, I feel like, you know, a lot of changes in the motorsport world. I mean, every year it's like that, especially with, you know, women coming into it. And then, you know. This year's been different in it terms has. of chaos. Though. It has. But even like, you look at things like, F1 Academy and mm. all the stuff going on all over the world. It's great. It's really good to see. Even like NASCAR, like because I've been watching it for can we, Shane. Can we talk about Drive to Survive and the yeah. fact that how many women um, they've brought into it now? There's that, but I feel like... I feel like it's very forced. Oh No, there's probably true, but then at, at the same time, I think like the female perspective is good. But it was so forced. They only did, did it. Did they... we finish the last season? No, 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 don't tell me. Okay, I won't so, spoil it. But So like they've brought in like props to them for bringing Claire Williams and Danica Patrick. Mm. But it's so obvious that they've done it because there's not enough female representation in the sport. Yeah. So they've exactly. had to bring commentators in purely yeah. because they can't include women in the paddock. But I mean, and I rate it. I, no, don't get me wrong. Like props to them. They could have just continued on with um, Will. Will, who I'm weirdly attracted to. Is that what his name is? <laughs> The, the the journalist in drugs, Buxton. <laughs> Will Buxton. Well, I'm really I am weirdly attracted to him. I think it's the position of power, maybe. <laughs> really? Maybe it's the accent. I don't know. I, don't I know. feel like I'm being like spoken. Some of the down. boys. Some of the Sometimes boys. I feel yeah, like yeah. I'm being spoken down to by him, and I'm like, I know that. Like, I know. <laughs> you're just repeating the obvious. But some of the boys in the media center know him from when he was around, and yeah. I'm just like, mm, what, what would you do? <laughs> What would you do? That out? <laughs> what would you do if you like saw him? I'd be chill. Really? Mm. I don't know. Like I know I wouldn't care, but like I just I don't you know. I don't think he deserves like the hate. He I don't think he gets hate. Oh, but I he didn't gets even slandered. know that he got hated. No, because you know some people are like, oh he just says but people just hate on things because they're the bored. obvious. But then again, like the people watching Drive to Survive, like but they're not motorsport people, they have no idea what's going he's on. He's literally there to state the obvious. Yeah. Exactly. Like, like, it's not like we're all when the F1 track fans. is wet, it is slippery. <laughs> kind of stuff. Wet tires are for when the track is wet. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, That's, Will. Yeah, thank you, Will. No, um, no sledge on Will. We love Will. No, it's great. And no, I think it's good. I watched the last. I would season. definitely get a selfie with him at the Grand Prix. Yeah, that would be like. I got one with um. I probably care more about Will than I do about most of the drivers. Really? Mm. See, that's that's a strange thing you got going on there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna own it. <laughs> I, um, I've done a bit of work like with Zach, not with Zach directly, but like through supercars, like I've interacted with Zach a lot. Yeah. I don't think he'd Zach know. Brown. Yeah. Sorry, Zach Brown. Remember I, our audience isn't F1 yeah, fans. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Will. I don't think he'd know like who I was if he saw me, yeah. but then at the Grand Prix till last year, I saw him just walking around and I'm like, oh, I know him. Zach got a photo with him. Bullshit. Really? Yeah. yeah dude, he was just, hilarious. he was just like wandering around like in the middle, you know, there's those big gaps where you mm. walk between the paddocks. He was just walking. Interesting. Yeah. My totally biggest flex is because we work really heavily with Castro. Dude, I'm so jealous. This still. year <laughs> we're doing another thing with the Alpine F1 drivers. Okay. Uh, for their, you know, obviously Castro is a global brand and Castro has a big presence here in Australia, but also in F1. And they've been partners. They were partners with Renault for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Renault become Alpine. And they've continued that partnership. So every year before the Grand Prix, we get a little bit of time with uh, Pierre and Esteban. Mm -hmm. And usually Jack Doohan as well comes along as the reserve driver. Um, So last year we went and drove. We didn't. I mean, I was there while Thomas Randall and the F1 guys and Molly Taylor drove uh, the Castro racing supercar around Mm. uh, the Thunderdome. They did heaps they of did challenges. They did like the challenge thing. They did yeah. like AFL challenge. They had like a Mighty Car Mods car that's there. So like cool. really cool. It was like a three part global that's, series. That's the sick. content I love. It was so like, good. It's just, it's so good. Yeah. yeah. We need to do more. So we're doing it. something like that again this year, which will be exciting. Grand Prix is the chillest event that it I have all year. It's so it's chill. Best. And you'd think it wouldn't be. Do you know what? The last two years in a row, I've been home to watch the Grand Prix. Me too. It's so good. Actually, no, I wasn't. I, I was last year, but then one of my friends asked if I wanted to go up in this corporate suite like halfway through the race. Vibe. It is hard to find a good spot. So I do not want to hang. Like, I could seriously stay there and watch in a corporate suite, but I'd yeah. also like much it's... rather just be on my couch at home. Yeah. It's been, yeah, hectic year. A lot has gone on. Last year, I got some really cool opportunities. I got to work um, with supercars and with Porsche a lot. 
and worked with some amazing women. Um, met so many good people along the way. Made a lot of friends last year, I feel like. You know, you have your people in motorsport, but then you have like those people that you're like... Like your posse. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. For you, Tanea, I want to know who is someone who has had an impact on you. It can be multiple, multiple women. We're talking about women here. This is girls on the grid. Mm. Of course. So who is a woman who is... Or whoever. Any women that have had an impact on you in the last year or just someone who you think is just killing it, you know? Okay, so all women that I work with have an impact on me because they're all incredible. I just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but two that come to mind just sort of recently, uh, one is Rihanna Crayon. Mm-hmm. So I, for those that don't know, I've been uh, taking photos for Re on race weekends for since... 2022, the start of 2022. Mm-hmm. And I all, just, those, all those beautiful photos you see of Rihanna on the grid. That is me. It's her. Um, and that's been a really cool opportunity to take photos with Rhi and like really like develop a friendship. And then she had a baby. Mm-hmm. And like I thought I had a level, like a massive level of respect already for her. And then she goes and grows a human being and then comes back to work when that kid's like two months old. And is working the entire time she's growing the human being, by the way. Yeah. Well, until Winton, which was like... Th- True. Three months but she before was, she was, she was, she was big. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then she comes back and she's like, in the time that like I've barely like got my shit together, she's like grown and birthed a human into this world and then comes back and still like dominates the world. And I'm just like, how do you do that? It's crazy. And like, she so literally good. like on race weekends, she literally like is breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. Like on race weekends, like so she's on TV and then like the next minute she's like in like the production office, like breastfeeding dash and then she's zips her suit back up and she's back on like that to me Mm. is uncomprehensibly cool women like how cool are women it is women are so cool like that is insane that is like ultimate boss Mm -hmm. level because like for me this is getting deep but as a chick and like running my own business and working in the sport like the idea of having kids scares me Mm. career-wise same what happens when i disappear for two years Mm -hmm. or do i have to disappear for two years do like what am I supposed to do versus what I want to do? I'm like I run my own business. Like I am my own boss. Obviously, that comes with freedoms of that, mm. but it also means when I step back and choose to have like I'm 25. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not young anymore. Like when I first first started doing this, I was 18. Not a care in the world. Didn't even think about those things. But I'm 25 now, and I actually have to think about you know in the next five to seven years, mm. if I want to have a family. Like that's that's game time. Exactly. It scares the willies out of me, but I have to start thinking about it. I have to be realistic about it. But then, like, what scares me is I've worked for eight years to build up this portfolio of clients, and then I disappear from from events for two years. And You'll still be gone. You'll be going around with, I wanna... with the belly and with the baby on your back. Like, you'll have it. I'll have it in the baby carrier. You'll, you'll, yeah. you'll be running around That's with the, the baby. That's the plan. Yeah. That's the plan. That is something that all women have to consider. I mean, I'm, I'm only 22, but it's something I think about as well is there's a biological clock. 100%. There's a point where if you want to have children in your life, you have to The longer you stop wait, the harder it gets. At some point yeah. uh, and make that decision. Hmm. Uh, do I have a kid now? Can I continue what I'm doing? Yeah. I think, honestly, I mean, it's very easy to see on the outside. Yeah, like you can do what you, you want, but, you it, see but it, it is hard. You have a... a human relying on you 100 and like obviously you see these men mm-hmm. not we're not anti-men on this podcast but, no. but like they can have the family and be home the monday tuesday wednesday yeah. and then go away and like this human doesn't rely on you for food exactly you know so like yeah it's just it's it's different for us and we mm-hmm. have to deal with the reality of that but i think now it's like it's almost becoming normal to see a lot of mm. women go back to work not long after having their kids and being able to manage a career and motherhood because, you know, we live in a world that was made for men back sure. in the day. Like, you know, for women to stay home, men to go to work, which is fine. But, you know, and some people still do that and that's great. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that either. Do you know the problem? A part of, like, not, it's not a problem, but, like, you know, we're grown up, we're, we're taught as we grow up to just get the job, a job, go to uni, get a, a degree, whatever job we get, we take home the paycheck and then like weekends and holidays are the thing. Yeah. For me, I love my job 
so much. And I've worked very, very, very hard to have a job that I absolutely like wake up in the middle of the night thinking about. Mm -hmm. And I get out of bed on a Monday and I'm so stoked to go to work. Like that's, it's not what a lot of people face. You know, like I have friends that hate their jobs, hate their nine to five jobs Mm -hmm. and they live for the weekend. Yeah, I've never understood that mentality. Neither have I. And it's nothing against them. But like for me, I'm like, how do I leave that? Yeah. That's like a nightmare for me. I'm not going to lie. Anyway, I think, you let's, know, let's stop getting depressed. Yeah, this before is I start really deep. I didn't expect it to yeah, be no. this deep. I've got one more woman that I want to talk about. Please. Second woman after Rihanna Korean. Uh, new to the scene, not new to the scene, but Erin McCarthy. Oh, love her. Amazing. Right? Yeah. So Erin was just kind of plodding around, a little bit in the background, was in Adelaide. Anytime we went to like Adelaide, she'd like hook up like a sick after party for us. Great vibes. Yeah. Um, and then she got a couple of like internship roles with like the race talk and Tickford and radicals radicals really started to pave her way Mm -hmm. in the sport. All of a sudden she's moving to the UK and she's working for Alpine F1. Crazy, right? So nuts. Uh, On an internship and like, you know, was just a social media comms intern for like three months, six months. I don't know how long it was. Very cool. We're going to get her on the pod for a full chat. At some point, because I love her. Yep. Um, and now she's working uh, full-time, almost full-time for Speed Cafe as their social media and digital uh, manager. And I spent heaps of time with her at Bathurst. We actually went to the gym, like, during the yeah, week. Yeah, I saw that. It was, yeah, it was such a vibe. I love that. And just wanted to give her a shout-out, because she's killing it. And she's she doing some doing really awesome. cool stuff. And she's appearing on camera now. I love that. I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah, More I'm women so on here camera. for it. Yeah. No, Erin's great. It's so cool to see how far she's come. And she's just... She's one of those girls that has just genuinely, like, gone out, worked so hard, networked so well. And that just proves, like, you know, she was just doing little odd jobs here and mm. there in Australia. And next thing, she's off in, in Europe working for a Formula One team. That's so cool. the dream. Mm. That's so cool. In the last year, I have been very inspired by the women I have met and the women that I've worked with. And also just formed really genuine friendships with as well. Um, I think that's so important in this industry is to have people that you know, like you, you have your people that you work with and that you get along with at work, but then those people that just genuinely become really good friends. Um, for me, I got to work with Laura Tullia a lot Love last her. year. Love she her. is awesome. Such a cool chick. Yeah. So she is a motorsport intern at Porsche. Had her first year last year. Did an amazing job. We got to work together a lot and we just had so much fun mm. as well. Like we'd work really hard, but just... Like, the reward was just that you we got guys, to hang out. And you guys are just good friends. <laughs> exactly. Like, like such... she's just become a really good friend. Yeah. And she's just killing it. And she's got a really good mindset. And just really motivated. And so, also great to party with. Really good to party with. Can really break good. it on the D floor. Yeah, for sure. Just really good fun. And she's a ripper little go-karter as well. <laughs> oh, my God. Me and she's her, actually it, really good. So, me and her are in, like, the world's, like, most intense AM championship. Because we're not as so good as good. Priya and the actual race car drivers that go go-karting. But Laura and I are like equal level and it is like to the it death is on. <laughs> every it is time so we on. race. It's so good. It's the best. I think did I, did when we went karting the other week. Oh, it didn't really count because we weren't racing. We were like just no, wobbling we just about. But yeah, Laura. I did do a faster lap time than her. That's good. Let's put that on the Wait, board. She got 47. Sorry, we're talking about our local karting joint. Now. I did quicker. I was quicker. Did you? I didn't say that. I'm sorry. Maybe I, I wasn't. wasn't. <laughs> anyway, I still <laughs> was... I won't say my lap time just to make sure no one gets upset. Let me just count for how long it takes Priya to actually say her lap time. 46 minutes. <laughs> it was five seconds. <laughs> okay, anyway, so, um, yeah, a lot of the Porsche chicks as well. Like, Porsche is really good. There's mm. so many, so many good chicks there. So good. Christy good Brockway, Amber Dunlop. I've got another one that just come to mind. Yeah. Christy Brown, love of my life. Oh, my life. God. She's great. Is she not the best human being so ever? She can take my mood from like a zero to yeah. like a 200 in like yep. two seconds. She's just a ball of energy, positivity, like oh my God. such a good chick. Awesome. So good. She, uh, she looks, she works for uh, Dale Wood and uh, at sign point and is his mm-hmm. EA on race weekends. And she's just Killing like, it. think about like happiness in a human. Mm-hmm. And that's like Christy Brown. Yeah. Another girl who I just absolutely adore so much is Maisie Place. I adore her for a lot of reasons. One of them is definitely because she let me drive her <laughs> race cars. But she has a lot of faith required. I know. She, she is just such a cool chick and like just so hands on with everything she does. Like 
She's like qualified mechanic, right? She runs her own business. That's like she vibe. has her own shop now, yeah. which she started this year. But she's cool. been a mechanic for the last like seven or eight years or something. Um, but like has her own business now. Is just really good with like rotaries, RX8s. Knows those cars inside and out. Like just a world of knowledge in, on cars in general. But RX8s, RX8s, she loves. And um, yeah, I was lucky enough to in the summer. I went up with... In the summer is such an American thing to say. In the Sorry. summer... <laughs> Continue. In the summer break, I went up to Macy's place with Matt Tatani. So Matt, he is a Hyundai XL driver. I got to drive his Hyundai XL as well. And him and I wanting to suss out the RX-8s. So we went up to Macy's. We stayed at her place for a couple nights. We got to go up and drive the RX-8s. I got to drive a BRZ as well. Learned so much. There's such cool race cars as well. But when we were there, on the way back to Canberra Airport, when she was dropping Matt and I off, we did a little podcast episode in the car. So, got about 15 minute chat. So, for those who don't know, Maisie, she does have her own episode on the podcast. For oh, full details. Yeah, story. Full, but stuff. it was a couple years back and we actually, I had to listen to it on the way up to her place and it's crazy how far she has come in the last two years. Like she had goals that she wanted to do and she's like completed all of them. So to get up to date on Maisie's career and journey so far, you can listen to episode 22 of the Girls in Grid podcast, which we did, I think maybe like two years ago. Mm. Um, but for now in this episode, we're gonna play the chat where Priya caught up with her to talk about how she's gone from where she was in episode 22 to where she is now. So don't mind the background noise. We are currently on our way to the airport. I've got Maisie Place in the car with me. Oh, a few bumps just there. And Matt Tatani. Hey Matt. Hello. This is the boys on the grid now. I think, what was I saying before? I think we've only had like... Two boys two or so. Boys. Two or three boys on this podcast. I'm and in this car ride enjoying it and uh, now you have to hear my voice as well. Which is going to be very painful. Sorry, guys. Nah, sure. yeah, Matt, Matt's definitely well, here for the girls. I've spent quite a lot of time racing this weekend, thanks to Maisie, and what an experience that was. So uh, it's been awesome having these two girls out there on track with me. It was the best time. Yes, thank you, Matt, for your support. Um, Matt has also helped me out recently. I got to have a drive of his Excel, and he coached me as well. So thank you, Matt. Owe that to you. And... Maisie as well. She let both both me and Matt have a drive of her RX-8 cup cars yesterday at Pheasant Wood Circuit, which was just awesome. It was such a cool experience. They are incredible cars, so much fun. But Maisie, do you just want to... Oh, actually, we'll go... We'll backtrack a bit. So Maisie, you came on the podcast probably nearly two years ago now. Yeah. <laughs> so back when we first started the pod, we had... We did an episode with Maisie, which was awesome. And she's come a long way since then. She's been doing a lot, which we'll get into very soon. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the RX-8, RX-8 Cup Series and a bit of what we got up to yesterday. So if you just want to tell the viewers what it's about, what we do, things like that, and also a bit about what we did yesterday. So the RX-8 Cup Series this year will be running only as a New South Wales Series. So... Um, the past couple of years we've been doing national series but we've cut back down to a New South Wales series this year um, but we will be doing uh, I think we've got two Victoria rounds and one Queensland round which is very exciting so we're kicking off the season in three weeks time at Phillip Island and like that's such an awesome track in these RX-8 Cup cars and also it'll be even more exciting this year we're allowed a control wing and we've never had aero before, which uh, I think aero will be a massive benefit through turn one at Phillip Island because, yeah, it's a very fast corner. So I'm excited for that. But, yeah, I've been involved in the RX-8 Cup Series since 2018. And originally I wanted to move on with my racing and go somewhere else in the future. But I'm very content where I am. I'm happy to stay with the RX-8 Cup Series. I'm not planning on going anywhere anymore. Um, I just love the series. It's like a big family. Everyone loves each other. Like it's it's just so great. It's awesome. And also in the last couple of years, you've worked really hard to pull your own RX-8 Cup car or RX-8 Cup team together. So you're running three cars. 
and you've got a few clients coming through as well. So tell us a bit about what that experience has been like and pulling together a a whole race team and also running it, just which you do mostly on your own. Like you're driving the cars, you're working on the cars, you're doing the admin, all of that. Tell us a bit about how that's been in the last few years, just pulling that together. Well, my parents have been an absolute godsend because I do get a bit over my head with the work and stuff. And at the track, it does get a bit crazy if um, if my car's having an issue, but one of my lease drivers is having an issue, I have to prioritise the lease driver. Um, so yeah, it, it does get a bit crazy, but I love every minute of it and I love keeping myself busy. And even if all my cars are running smoothly, I go and help other competitors. But yeah, running three cars has actually been so much fun. Like a lot of people might think it's stressful, which it, it does get stressful, but the rewards are way better. I just, I, I love doing it. And also last time we talked, you were working full time as a mechanic. Is it, is your job like a mechanic or is it yeah, specifically, you do rotaries, don't you? Well, so I did my Cert 3 in light vehicle automotive, but I was working at a rotary specialist workshop. Yeah. Um, which I finished up at that shop, uh, which I was at for seven years. I was at that workshop and I finished up at the end of the year and moved back to my hometown and I'm opening my own business, Maisie's Mechanical. How good. That's so exciting. So we'll talk a bit about yesterday as well. So we did a track day in the RX-8, which was cool. So RX-8 Cup Series, very cool community, really good group of people. Everyone's super supportive. Like it was, it was a really good vibe at the track. It was so much fun. Matt, tell us a bit about your experience. Obviously, you've got driving experience. You've raced Excels. What do you think of the Cup Car, the RX-8 Cup Car? So I'd seen so much about it. Um, obviously, being a New South Wales-based series, I always wanted to give it a crack and try something with a bit more power. Especially, you know, an RX-8. It's a unique car. It's a rotary. I don't know much about them, but uh, to have the opportunity to just jump in a car, it was something I could not say no to. And my initial thoughts were oh god I'm gonna screw this up you know being only having driven front wheel drive but the cars are very easy to um, get used to quite quickly and after doing at least 50 or so laps I felt quite comfortable my my big thing with the series is just the affordability I mean to be honest with you I know a lot of excels on our grid have spent more money than people have in the RX-8 Cup and bank for buck what you get for that car is absolutely fantastic and to be honest with you I would I would love to do a round at this point it just coming out of that day was such a fun experience and a huge learning curve also Maisie so how many like how many cars are you actually running in the series this year because you've got the three which are yours did, did you say you have a fourth one I'm I'm currently building a Bathurst six hour car that um After it's finished at the Bathurst 6 hour, you are allowed to run enduro tanks in RX-8 Cup Series. So it will do its Bathurst 6 hour and then be used as a RX-8 Cup car after that. So it will be leased out, um, same as the other two are. And then I'll continue to drive Frogger, of course. But um, I'm also running some cars for other people. So there's some people who run their own cars but have me there helping out. So... If they end up needing work done on their car, they'll pay me to jump in and like change their gearbox for them or whatnot. And I'll also be looking after Jamie Canellis this year, who has raced RX-8 Cup for years, and he absolutely loves it. He came across from Pulsars, and he just loved the RX-8 platform. And, yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. I find it so cool that you just do everything. Like, this weekend, I mean, I as much as I love racing and I love cars, I don't know a lot about the mechanical side and like the very hands-on side but I've seen this weekend like you do everything like she knows she's so knowledgeable with the cars it's absolutely insane and just being so hands-on I mean I wish I had that level of skill but we'll talk a bit more about the Bathurst six hour as well so it's your first six hour isn't it Uh, I've pit crewed at six hour for the past couple years for Rick Shaw who ran an RX-8 in the team last year We ran two RX-8s, so I was pickering for them there. Um, That opportunity actually ended up taking me to Nürburgring, so it's crazy how you can go suddenly from the six-hour to pit crew in Nürburgring. 
And um, you, you actually mentioned that in the last podcast as well, that yeah, that was one of your dreams. I said I wanted to go to Nürburgring so cool. and I've done it. It's, it's crazy. It, I still don't think it's real, but yeah, so I've, I've had a lot of involvement with the six hour. And so we will be pitting with Rickshaw this year. Um, but we'll be running one car each team and just helping each other out. And that's what RX8 Cup spirit is all about, like helping each other out. And I think it'll, it'll look good to be able to see that it's two different teams, but we're working as one team. And I'm really excited for it. And we've got some international drivers coming over to drive the cars. There's talks of Dave Cox coming back from England to drive uh, Rick's six-hour car again this year. And I've got three New Zealanders going to be in my car. So it'll be cool to have the internationals and uh, yeah, it's it's really good to have people from all over the world come in to drive these cars. Yeah, it's definitely like a growing category. I mean, like there's there's the RX-8 series in New Zealand as well. Do, so does the Australian category have much to do like with that series? Like is there a connection there at all? This year, yes. So there's actually two RX-8 series in New Zealand. So there's the North Island series and the South Island series. Um, I don't specifically remember which series has which rules, but um, one of their series is very similar to our cars and the other series, they run a lot more aero. They have no ABS, stuff like that. So they're a lot more race car-like, but we, we're very production-based. So... Um, We've partnered with the Pro 8 series, and so the winner of their category will get to come drive one of our cars, and the winner of our category will get to go drive one of their cars. So I think that's really exciting, like being able to um, do that with a series so similar to ours in another country. So um, yeah, thank, thanks to Pro 8 for doing that for us. That's awesome, and also I'm just I've. I'm just thinking back to our last episode and you've gone on to achieve so many of the things that you were wanting to achieve back then. So I guess what's on the cards for you now? Like where do you kind of want to take your business and your racing and your involvement with the category? Like when we talk to you in another year's time or another two years time, what would you be hoping to have done? Well, it's all very surreal because everything I said was a goal of mine when we last spoke I've achieved that now like all all my goals I wanted by the time I die I've achieved by the time I was 22 so um pretty much everything from here on out is is just a bonus and I'm just trying to enjoy myself I might start doing some YouTube um I'm building a Barra RX-8 drift car so um I'm probably going to do a big YouTube build on that uh, I'd just like to start building some weird and wonderful cars, teach myself how to do it all. I um, ended up building my first engine after we last spoke and then the car I put it in got sideswiped and written off and like that car was my baby, I was so upset. Um, so I'm actually going to teach myself how to do the bodywork, wide body it. I, I, I really, I love being hands on and I want to learn how to do all this extra stuff that I I have done bits and pieces of, but I'd like to just, I'd love to be a professional at it, you know? You're not a professional at it? I don't know. You seem like a professional to me. I know. Did you, did you see that rear quarter I painted on Dynaco? It's not the greatest. Oh, mate. It, it looks, <laughs> it's nothing, it's something I couldn't do. Um, yeah, no, it's awesome to see what you've achieved. One thing we also talked about, well, I think we probably more talked about it after we recorded the previous podcast because I think once we actually stopped recording I think we recorded for like an hour you and I just sat there and we talked for like two hours <laughs> and one of the things we talked about was me coming and driving one of these cars at that point I'd had no driving experience at all couldn't drive a manual car still kind of can't <laughs> <It's> <laughs> couldn't 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 drive a race car didn't know how I was going to get into it and now we've done it which is really cool like I was saying this morning I was looking at Frogger and I was like, I can't believe I've driven that car. I've watched you race that car around Sydney Motorsport Park and now I've had a drive and it was an awesome car. And yeah, like Matt said, just really unique. And it, it's kind of like they're similar to an 86, but just have just a lot more power and, and the sound and the noise as well. Like it feels like you're in a proper race car. So yeah, thank you so much for that. Got some good coaching. It was a really cool circuit absolutely loved it and yeah awesome to see what you're doing um i want to say good on you as well priya because you did so many laps and i I mean obviously with the excel event we did you came out of that day being so quick and then you also came into this pheasant wood event 
in the RX-8 and your confidence built up so quickly. Oh, so her, her first heel toe when I was in the car with her, that That's that nice. was shocking. It nearly sent me through the windscreen. But by the end of the day, it was perfect. Like the with how far you came in that day, and that's where the RX-8s are really good. Where they're a fantastic learning car, and that that's where I found because I I started out in an RX-7 and then I moved on to the RX-8s, and the RX-8s were just so much easier to drive. They handle so much better, and just as a beginner racer the rx8s are such a great platform and to build a like it's 15 20 grand to build a car and yeah it's just that's exactly where you should be starting and just with how far you moved in the rx8 yesterday you you just came so far and then you jumped into the brz and you're instantly quick in the brz because it's such a similar car to drive yeah it was really impressive to see how well you did yesterday no, thank you very much. I couldn't have done it without you guys. Kind of enjoying it at the moment for me and trying to learn as much as I can and definitely learned so much yesterday. So I guess, I mean, if I were to race something starting out, it would definitely be something like an RX-8. So if there's anyone listening who is wanting to get into grassroots motorsport, definitely check out the RX-8 Cup Series. And like I mentioned before, just a really good community, a really supportive group of people as well. And you'll be getting all the help you can get and if you have any questions about anything definitely ask Maisie because she is just a world of knowledge as well and has so much experience with these cars but yeah it was a great great few days um, absolutely enjoyed every second of it and really looking forward to seeing how you go in future and going to be keeping a close eye in the next year and hopefully you will have achieved all your goals the next time we talk which will be very soon. Um, watch this space because Pri is definitely going to be racing something at some point. 100%. It's happening. 100%. Like, after all the driving you've done so far, it's about time. We will see. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. We're going to be trying to do a lot more of this stuff this year. A few more different episodes. Obviously, we're still going to keep doing our long form interviews, but we're hoping to do a little bit more kind of vlogs at events. Did you, would you call them vlogs, podcasts? Um, What's like, yeah, what's a vlog without a, an, a vision? Uh, yeah. <laughs> a po- it's well, a voice log. Not a voice video. log. There, yeah, you go. there you go. We're going to be doing more of those at the events as well. So a few different things coming. So keep an eye out. But thank you all so much for the endless support. We appreciate it so much. And we will talk to you very soon. You've just listened to another Network Car production. 